Alright, we're back again. See how it goes. And such. So, where do we leave off? So I did, uh, I'll do the painting first, I suppose. Commentary about life in general. Um, well, I guess I'll do the subjects first. Subjects are going to be something like, I watched a great text and uh, Das Buch conversation. Um, you know, in Das Buch's painting video. And uh, so it would be uh, subjectivity, transhumanism, death, you know, how to do it, <laughs> you know, how to die right, um, and then magic crap. You know, phantasmagorical, silly, let's just hope reality isn't reality kind of bullshit. Just absolute bullshit. We don't know. Crap. Um, but anyway, painting-wise, okay, I did do some work. This has changed since you last saw it. I've, I've been, I've been, when I listen to the Das Buch videos, I'm saying, wait, this is too big a, I mean, it's a big time killer. So I've been painting while I listen, so, yeah, and I'm not going to record those. So, screw it. I mean, I guess I could do the, um, time lapse -y thing or something, but, you know, this gets into, you know, it gets to be occupying of time just to do the video uploads, and the, then I have to process those videos, and blah, 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 so this is the way I'll do it for now, and maybe if I, what the hell is that, uh, feel compelled, <coughs> I will, um, or feel the need, or something, um, yeah, I'll do that, I'll time lapse the extra stuff, you know, yeah, because it, it does, it does, it does make a difference. Though I, you know, I can concentrate better. So, um, so anyway, I did ape myself a little, <clears throat> you know, just to just need, need more life. And I, I've got to do this. This is too square. I got to Einstein this a bit, and you know. But uh, you know, it's, it's got at least it's got some. It's getting some bite to it now. At least it's got some, you know. But it's wrong in a lot of ways. There's lots to fix. Anyway. Um, so, uh, subjectivity, yeah, my favorite subject. Um, all right, so, <clears throat> the, the simple thing to say on this idea of, um, you know, the fact that we have a, a subjective interpretation, I've been through this, I just did the psychology crap, um, and, uh, you know, we were psychology, we're conditioned, we have preferences and prejudices. So that's a, a kind of value that's built into our biology, and that's what I was trying to get to. So our biology creates agendas. Food, sex, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Food, sex, not, not, not. I mean, there really isn't anything else, is there? Um, and uh, in one way or another, uh, you know, Freudian style. Um, you know, that's it. We're, we're pretty narrow. Um, Anyway, the biology, the visceral, the agenda set by the mechanism, and then the agenda set by conditioning just has to do with this hierarchy crap, feeling good about yourself, which also has to do with sex and all that kind of shit. So that's all there really is. And uh, so in, in those, in that, in the mechanism that the, the visceral, physical mechanism creates the agenda, get food, get comfort, um, you know, sex, whatever. Um, and then the psychology says, what kind of sex? <laughs> you know, tall sex, short sex, fat, thin sex, whatever kind it is. Up, down sex, who cares? But yeah, that's your conditioning, okay? So yeah, you're conditioned in whether you like sushi or steak or, um, you know, vegetable soup. Yeah, that's conditioning, blah, blah, blah. Or it's intellectual. And that's the third one, the intellect that can tell you that eating that's wrong and eating that's right, so try to eat that instead of that, and it'll taste good once you eat it a few times. That kind of crap. Um, so when we talk about objective values, we're talking about that intellectual part, the part that can do that figuring out thing. That it's better to like uh, the, to, to use the efficient light bulbs rather than the inefficient light bulbs, or it's better to take the home litter home and put it in your special little garbage can than throw it in the street. And, those sort of logical um, values um, that are can be called objective values, rationally based values, logically based values, and that's what we're really talking about: is values that have a a fundamental sensibility to them, based on a um, something more abstract and more um, more uh, <coughs> uh, meaningful 
then what did my biology say or what did my fifth grade teacher you know what kind of stick did she hit me with and therefore what kind of bullshit am I you know it's my my dick hard kind of bullshit you know instead of letting um, you know a mechanism decide what you are um, you know it's a it's a more um, intelligent decider although I can't really change you know, often it's very hard to change your conditioning, to change the wiring and say, I'm going to deliberately and willfully change my preferences. That's really hard to do, um, you know, when it comes to um, uh, really basic stuff like sex or something. Um, sexual preferences are pretty hardwired, really hard to get around that with any kind of, you know, there's not, no real weapon to get around it. You're just kind of stuck with whatever you're stuck with. And... Um, you're not going to be able to get around it with some sort of, I intellectually know better, uh, I will now like somebody because I like their personality and not because I demand that they have a physical presence that is uh, consistent with what my, my, my vision of what should be is, you know, um, and, um, you know, we just don't have that kind of control. But it would be very nice if we did. We just don't. So there's no point in going on too much about that because it's just not the way the machine works. You just don't. You're not given that kind of authority to rewrite the visceral um, conditioned reactions are often going to be permanent and controlling. Um, so anyway, but you know, obviously there's some mutability. Um, there seems to be some mutability with people when it comes to, uh, ex you know, as you get older, like when you're 15, you know, a, a, a woman 30 years old does look kind of like an old hag in some respects. So there does seem to be some mechanism that steers you, you know, um, to things within a, an age range. Uh, I sort of haven't found that yeah, I was kind of hoping the, uh, oh, 50-year-old women are hot kind of thing would tr pop in, but it just hasn't triggered yet or whatever. So I'm still stuck um, outside of my uh, proper age range, I suppose. Um, although I'm much more flexible than I was. Uh, maybe when I was in my 20s, I would have been a lot more um, demanding about a, a certain type of woman. Uh, to find attractive, um, you know, physically, um, desirable physically. Um, and so, yeah, you become, <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, sometimes any tree will do. <laughs> you know, sometimes it doesn't even have to be a woman, which is, you know, kind of spooky. Uh, but anyway, um, that's a whole separate subject, actually. So anyway, values. So obviously our body creates values, or our psychology creates values. And when we talk about an objective value, or an objective morality, or an objective uh, uh, ethics, we're really just talking about what, what can we logically deduce to be um, valuable. And, and, uh, and so I think logically it, there's overwhelming evidence, uh, there's overwhelming um, reasonableness to the deduction that the important function that's taking place here is consciousness, sentience. That that's the, the valuable thing, is the welfare of sentient organisms. That's the whole game is about it. It's, it's like playing Monopoly and understanding that the, oh, money is what the game is about. You're playing for money. All right? So the value is, is obvious, and I'd say that through our experience of consciousness, I think we are made perfectly aware that the value is in the sensual experience. The, there's no real value in climbing the mountain. There's only value in what it does to a human sentient um, in climbing the mountain. There's no value intrinsic in uh, a painting. It, it's The value is in the reaction of the viewer and the um, perhaps the therapy or expression um, of the the uh, creator of the 
the mechanism, the thing, the, the device that will somehow create um, a meaningful or, or substantive experience for uh, a sentient. And that's really all it's about. I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't matter whether it's an animal or a human, um, you know, food and it has value because it makes something feel good and comforts them. Um, provides for their survival so they don't have to go through the, the angst and uncomfortableness of dying and all of that. These are, these is what makes things valuable. And so objective um, standards of value are just based on this idea that it is the sentient welfare. And then the real question is, is how much weight do we put on these different sentient welfares? You know, and for centuries people didn't put much weight on a, a black man's welfare, especially a black woman's welfare. People didn't worry themselves about the comfort and uh, state of being of that organism. And obviously they, they abused and trapped and tormented and, you know, husbandtried in, in maliciously horrible ways, all kinds of animals, and slaughtered them for their meals and tortured them you know, and confined them and did all kinds of awful things, and still do, um, because they don't put any value on its condition, on its welfare, on the experience it's experiencing. And it's just plainly, in my opinion, it's grotesquely illogical. It doesn't make any sense not to value those experiences. As a sentient, it's, uh, you're offending <laughs> your, your own kind by not appreciating um, the uh, what's happening, um, you know, to these sentient beings, and so anyway, uh, you know, Great Tex's uh, argument is just this vacuous one where he compares everything, everything, every value question is somehow some sort of, you know, what kind of what kind of what what is your culture taught you or what. You know that that kind of re reductionism to um, an issue of personal preference that we would agree is personal personal preference, and instead of dealing with the idea that there are ethics that can be deduced based on some other uh, premises, rather than how does it make you feel, if we can talk about how it makes us think. Um, you know, we're not. Uh, we're not narrowed. You know, I still don't like this. I still have to somehow get this this mouth correct, and I still haven't figured out exactly why it's wrong. But it's wrong. I don't think that made it right, but <laughs> um, yeah, I still don't like it. Got to fix the eyes too. That's a I think I'll work on eyes. Uh, they're just a little bit, well, they're a lot of bit outrageously wrong. They're way too big and they're too, uh, well, I mean, I'm probably going to leave them big because, uh, you know, it adds a little bit of, um, I could take advantage of that exaggeration. Um, uh, but, um, where was I? Um, yeah, so, so this, is the, that, this is the real issue, is, is that there's, there are issues of value that can be described, and all you need to do is establish these premises, that, you know, the real value isn't so much the house, the, the fact that something's alive, the real value is in how it's, what its welfare is, you know, we can make these determinations, that's where we can figure out that, uh, you know, a lot of people can anyway, a lot of people have figured out that if somebody's in a coma, uh, you know, there's no value in their um, sentience, in their life, that their life is effectively over, and uh, it's just some emotional retardation that prevents the, uh, the human beings from just admitting the truth, that the life form has ceased to be meaningfully alive, and that it's time to let it go. Um, you know, it's it's done. It's over. 
its life has ended. And uh, it's silly to pretend, um, you know, that just because its heart still beats or, um, uh, you know, that you have some sort of, that there's some sort of desperate possibility that the person will have some miraculous recovery, that there's some real point in um, pretending, you know. Not, and just not acknowledging the truth that the person has ceased to relevantly exist and that even if you could cure them you'd, you'd be putting them in no good condition you'd just be in a sense torturing them to wake up in a in a, in a degraded and uh, you know fundamentally dysfunctional condition um, and that there's no purpose in doing that to somebody. That there's no, no reason to. So, you know, we've sort of gotten some of this down. And it's just getting the religious folk out of the way, you know, so we can um, do what uh, logic would dictate. Which is, you know, recognize when, we're, when we've reached these points where the game is essentially over. And it's time to let it go. And... Uh, you know, especially in the in the case of the Alzheimer's and the rest of it, there's no point in torturing somebody. Um, you know, perpetuating a life that has no relevance to, to the individual that once possessed it. It means nothing. They, they don't even. They have no real identity. They're not really six years old again. They're they're just a confused psychology, just a confused entity. You know, living in a in a, in a horrid twilight of 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 non-identity, um, you know, they're 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 not true to who they were. They're not they're not that person. I am trying to establish some references in this you know this time around, so I will look and see if I can <laughs> see myself somewhere in this slop. Um, try to, you know, it's too dark, obviously, anyway, but, um, um, you know, try to get some of these sh this shape correct, but I, I will likely fail, um, because it's really not a good enough reference. Um, <coughs> um, straight enough. Um, but anyway, this is sort of the style of my, I do paint this way, generally speaking, where I'll, I'll start adding, um, color, you know, like light colors and dark colors, you know, just the grays and whites, and then I will come back and place color on top of those and kind of just keep doing that, um, you know, going from black and white to, um, um, you know, color uh, in an effort to, you know, get the to get that, that dimensionality to, to, you know, get, get some sort of shape to show up in terms of, um, um, you know, the, 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 yeah, shape, shape's the right word, shape, yeah, you get a shape to form, um, and, um, you know, but, and you know, get get the the texture. I guess is what I'm trying to say. The the geography, the topography. That's it. The, the topography, um, right? With the lights and the darks, and then uh, you know, try to get the color to even out eventually. Um, to a stage, there'll be a stage where I'll just say, that's good enough. <laughs> you know, so it is kind of a, um, it's not a style that lends to perfection, I suppose, unless, well, I haven't really played it out to that extreme, I suppose, is true also, though. I haven't really tried to make it go there. I've always just sort of um, given up on it before, um, you know, I force it to, to go there. So I just kind of... Um, you know, get um, 
the lines to conform and the shape to conform. And then, as I state, then you know, and eventually I'll just say, well, that's sort of close enough. Um, you know, to what I'm looking for in terms of the the shape and the 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 color. So I'll be satisfied enough and give up. Kind of a thing. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, the eyes are the thing. I still want to fix these eyes. Um, oh, some of this dark. So I guess that's enough for subjectivity. Uh, subjectivity. Um, I don't want to beat it to death because I've been over the subject many times. But I mean, it's just really just about establishing this is a simple premise. You know that. Um, Sentience is a significant event in the universe. Um, it's different than all other events, um, and that it has a fundamental value component. It's just, it's just a fundamental value component built right into it. it. It screams value in its very essence. It produces value in its very, its very formation. It's very. Uh, it just does it. It just makes value happen. Um, it doesn't allow you to... It just can't be ignored. It, it, from our own personal experience, we see it. We, we feel it happen to us. We, the value just reeks. <laughs> you just can't miss it. Uh, you can't miss it honestly, I suppose I'd say. There's no honest denial. Uh, only a dishonest one. Um, so, uh, next, yeah, so I can go into the next word. Um, transhumanism, yes, yeah, so I got into that a little bit. You know, these phantasmagorical, um, this, this idea that there's somewhere else to go. And Great Text concedes that this has limited reasonability. Um, but apparently this is what annoys these people about uh, reality is that yes, it doesn't provide these, it doesn't provide much room for this fantasy, um, and yet they'll just insist that this is the important thing for human beings to do is to be exploring these fantasies um, <clears throat> about the possibility of life outside of this, the box, <laughs> as if the box can somehow, like there's some way you can do something with this box, and there's no, there's nothing to do with the boxes. The box is the box. Um, you know, there's, there's no, you can't escape the fundamental nature of the device, and the fundamental nature of the device is a, is a need machine. There isn't, there's nothing else going on here. Um, it, it's a, you have to create the, the, the deprivation, and uh, that creates the agenda of the, the satisfaction, the need to gratify, the, the sense of. Depravity of 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 being without, lacking, being deficient. So the, the you know the, the deficiency is in the is created in, in the perception, um, and then there's an excuse to attempt to find um, escape from um, a sense of feeling a, a perception. Of um, of need, um, and that's what we're doing. <sighs> you know, I still haven't got that one right. But whatever, I'll give up at some point. No, I won't give up. I'll just cheat where I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't like the unevenness of that, but it might not matter much. Eyes are never perfect anyway. Right, right. Um, oh, I gotta do something with a nose. Um, so yeah, so this, so this idea that we can, you know, okay, we get this, some sort of super body, some sort of super mechanism, some sort of defenses against disease and this and that and the other thing, we live forever. I mean, all these questions just still leave open the, what are you going to do forever? 
Um, they don't describe what God did forever. Right? God exists forever. And apparently he was doing something forever. I mean, apparently creating in other universes or something. Somehow that creation finally fell apart. You know, they finally had enough. <laughs> because he, need, he felt the need to show up here and start fiddling around with this creation machine. Um, so apparently it went, it finally, it, it ran its course, um, you know, in, in wherever God land. And uh, it became a, um, um, Uh, it, be, it was something we needed to, you know, some, something needed to be corrected here because there was, you know, for, for whatever, start over again. Let's do it again. Uh, play it again, Sam thingy or whatever. Um, and, you know, so what, what are you going to do? Just play out the same, the same fishing game, you know, go fish. we we'll just play go fish in some new three-dimensional, you know, it's like Star Trek and it's three-dimensional chess. Oh, I bet that's just so much fun, right? Like, regular chess isn't enough of a, a mind fuck. You know, you gotta, now you gotta do it on three dimensions. And uh, that's called fun, or an improvement. Now, it's called just another stupid way to compete with each other. <laughs> you know, by some new, new standard where now you have to have, you have to exercise all this extra intellectual capital waste some more neurons, you know, knowing the six million patterns and four million, you know, blueprints of how to win at three-dimensional chess, you know, the, the gunkonk maneuver. Yeah, you can apply the gunkonk maneuver. You know, it's like football, and you'll have, you know, instead of just a quarterback sneak and, you know, an end run and, you know, the, the standard um, uh, plays, no, we'll now have to have, we'll have to have all these new super plays because now we're playing three-dimensional football. So now it'll be a double hexagon blib-blob or uh, flagon 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 You know, and it's like almost like sexual shit people do now. You know, it just gets more and more bizarre, more and more hardware involved. You know, let's let's get pull out the pull out the the, the motors and the generators and the you know. Because we need to, we need to, uh, uh, you know, create uh, the illusion, um, you know, the, the uh, some sort of mechanism of, uh, you know, to enhance the experience. Because even in this world, we've we've made it all kind of samey and redundant, and uh, you know, people can't seem to recognize that that's what we're doing here. We're just, we're just, you know, playing kind of a, a sick, pitiful, sad game of, of one-upsmen, of, you know, just, just, you know, find some technology to play the same game in some new stupid way, uh, just to relieve our, our boredom. Is that what it is? You know? And these are, this is coming from the people that think life is intrinsically and fundamentally beautiful and you can just sit and quietly contemplate it and that's all you need and these are somehow somehow these end up being the same people who think we do need some sort of you know extracurricular um, um, crap um, but they won't admit when you're in a conversation with them they won't admit that's what they're doing they won't call that what it is you know, just a desperately um, uh, resisting the the nature of life. Um, um, you know, like they're going to somehow, you know, like, like the game gets better if you just add more spaces on the board. And it's not a better game. It's just, it's just the same stupid game. And they just don't want to admit that. And so they will deal with the the fact of our um, you know, that, that we're trapped in kind of a silly, redundant game um, by saying, well, look, we're doing it a little tiny bit different, so that justifies it. Just little tiny differences make all the difference, and blah, 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 and they'll get all mushy and spiritual about it, and that somehow um, 
excuse um, and defend what they know will be the inevitable, well, that'll get samey too. You know, that'll start not working also. As soon as you cure one disease, then the other diseases will just pay more attention to. We'll just be more aware of how they're controlling us and how they're blighting us. Um, human beings aren't fundamentally happier now than they were in the past. I mean, obviously, getting rid of smallpox and polio and all kinds of horrible things hasn't really made human beings, hasn't, hasn't completed them. We're still, uh, we still seem pretty fundamentally incomplete. Seems to be an awful lot of people on the old Prozac. I mean, here they have all this, all this wonderful, you know, no polio, no smallpox, and yet they, uh, they need some Prozac and some booze to get through the day. That's the other irony of it, right? These are usually, you know, a lot of these people are people using substances to enhance their life experience. You know, like even Matt, you know, these these Gaia people, um, you know, seem awful um, comfortable with the idea that, oh yeah, well, you know, they probably would get kind of dismal and harsh if, you know, we didn't have these uh, little escape drugs to, to make it all magical, you know, to get us out of our, our, our uh, you know, the, the, the harsh dismatality uh, of the game. Yeah, you didn't have your, you know, your, your pills to, to, you know, be able to put on your Jedi suit and live the more interesting life. Yeah, maybe it ain't such a, maybe it ain't such a grand old game then. You know, when you have to play it for real. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'll leave it on there just for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I do have to, you know, I have to get more face coming out of this painting and less gorilla coming out. Uh, I do like the gorilla look, don't get me wrong. I, it's a good look for me, Gorilla. Um, so I'll probably keep some of that. Um, uh, it does need it does need something more structural here. I gotta think on it. Um, all right. So anyway, uh, where was I? Okay. So I think I beat the transhumanism thing. Let's move on to the death. Yeah. So they they did a little talking about how they would like to die and. Um, Great Dex did mention the uh, scene from um, Soylent Green, where you go to the Diatorium, and uh, they play some very nice videos as you slowly um, fade away. And yeah, it all sounds really nice, but we know that the human race isn't ready for any of this stuff, which is really annoying. Um, you know, that the religious kooks are going to keep us from having a civilized death because they don't want anything taking away God's authority. You can't, we're not allowed to offend religion. And, and you know, these are, this, you know, it's really annoying because these people are so um, placating to the, the common religious folk. But it's these common religious folk who impose an awful lot of this nasty, um, uh, restrictions on our freedom to think and to act in our, and to, to invest our own welfare and our own judgment. These are the, the people who are, you know, it's not God's authority, then it's the authority of the FDA to tell us what's healthy. You know, but apparently the FDA is incredibly fat and uh, an alcoholic because the FDA can't seem to be able to find anything wrong with being fat and alcoholic. <laughs> you know, it's only cigarettes they can find something wrong with, which is, uh, you know, ironic and funny and silly and stupid. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. Let me go on that. Um, where, did, where was I? What is the subject? Oh, yeah, dying. So, yeah, so, so they talk about this. Yeah, sure, we all... I, I have done it many, many times. You think about how, oh, yeah, it'd be nice to die this way or that way, and you know, maybe I can make that happen. 
but it is hard to make happen, right? Because you're always in this position where uh, it's never really a good day to die. I mean, you really have to be lucky, you know, to have your life in enough order, have things all figured out. You know, you're just not told that, okay, this is really it, you know what I mean? Most times you get sick, well, you know, a little pill might be okay, blah, 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 a little surgery might be okay. And so you kind of play out the game, and uh, you just don't give up while you still can give up. You know, it's like you wait until you're too injured to pick up the surrender flag. And so, um, you know, although you might mentally be willing to surrender, um, you know, you're just not physically, so to speak, in a position where you can do it. Uh, you're not going to be able to lift up the white flag. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get on your horse to carry it. You know, so you're you're going to um, you're going to get slaughtered uh, because you're just not ready for it. You, ha you haven't you haven't done what's required to have the control necessary to do anything. And um, you know that's the catch of it. So you have to prepare for these things. You can't just count on luck of the circumstances. You have to be prepared ahead of time. You have to be ready. And we just don't tend to do those things. I mean, even I haven't done it. And I'm staunchly and completely and overwhelmingly afraid of dying badly. And yet I haven't taken care of it. Because it's just so unintuitive to... Uh, doing what you got to do to survive, and uh, you know it's just very unwise of me to be as um, lazy about taking care of that business. It's almost a business you think of as you really shouldn't even have to take care of it. I guess that's part of why, too. Is I, I almost feel like it's I shouldn't have to do this. I shouldn't have to. You know, you know why should people get in my way? Why why should I have to plead? Or, or protect myself against their judgment. Why, why should they be controlling this circumstance at all? And so I guess part of it is just obnoxious um, non-compliance. I don't want to fill out the forms, so to speak. I'm, I'm saying, no, you don't have a right to oblige me to fill out these forms or to meet these standards or to do this, jump through these hoops. This isn't your business, this is my business. Um, and it, I should have the right to do this, and I shouldn't have to seek your permission, seek your sanction. Why, why should you be sanctioning this decision? Who the fuck are you people to tell me what life means and when I should feel that it's uh, served its purpose and it's uh, completed its function and it's time for me to uh, exit, stage, whichever. Um, yeah, it just really is quite evil uh, that we even have to um, think about these things. But obviously, I, I so I mean, I, you know, fundamentally, I agree with these people. But it's you know, it's nice to think about dying well, but very few people actually accomplish it. All right, um, all right. And the last of it was that they had a whole video on some sort of spiritualism mumbo jumbo. Uh, magic kind of bullshit. You know, like there's some sort of unanswered questions. Isn't deja vu too complicated to understand? Almost kind of bullshit. Um, you know, uh, oh, the, the street light went out, and you know, when I was standing under it, and blah blah blah. And I'm not smart enough just to concede the point that street lights go out every day, and somebody sometimes is going to be underneath one when it happens, and that's not magic. Yeah, that there is no voodoo. We know that all the all the gods were bullshit, and <laughs> none of them have shown up. Um, and all the stories are crap, and uh, they're just stories. It's all crap. There is no there is no fantasy functionality. The function is the DNA. The function is the biology. Um, you know, there's no. Uh, need to have extensive conversations about our personal, um, you know, fantasy delusions of self-importance and to call that something real. Uh, it's just crap. Um, and, you know, let's call it the, call the spade the spade, call the 
the, the, the delusional wishful hoping what it is, delusional wishful hoping, and, uh, you know, quit playing this game like you're living a special life um, as a philosophy. Like I said, you want to indulge in that crap um, for your own personal entertainment, uh, knock yourself out. I have no objection, but, um, you know, don't pretend that this is some sort of, you know, that, that a thinking brain is going to have much problem saying, now oh, what is this crap? I mean, we know there's no voodoo. We know there's no magic. These are tricks. Okay, that's all they are. They're tricks. And, and the anything that happens to you that appears to be something else, there's just going to be an explanation, and you know it. You know that, uh, you know, since they... In, since we invented the cell phone, you know, all of a sudden the, the UFOs just don't visit as often, do they? You know, somehow all those people who are having all those experiences and all those adventures, all those anal probes, you know, not a single, not a single anal probing on, on uh, video, you know, not a, not a single one captured on a cell phone left on as you drop it as the aliens take you away. No, this doesn't happen. I think the the there is no mystery here. We know this is all just delusional interpretations, wishful thinking. I need to be somebody. I want to be somebody. I want my life to matter. Blah 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 blah. Yes, it's all quite understandable. Um, but it's evil in my opinion, to imply that it's something, that that's real, that's just want expressing itself loudly. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing happening there. Let's, let's, you know, let's just, let's, let's just quit lying, please. Could, could we have an agreement that lying sucks, um, and grandizement sucks, gilding lilies, and, you know, playing this game of, of, well, it seems so real, except when I really think about it and I remember it, oh, yeah, well, maybe it wasn't all that magical, but maybe I just like it as a memory. Maybe I just like to think of it because it was delusional and it was magical and it was important and it was all that stuff. And so I like to think of it that way, but I do when I remember it honestly. You know, I can see all kinds of room. I can recognize I had a beer in my hand at the time, or I had just drinking a fifth of uh, something, and uh, yeah, or I had taken XYZ drug, and um, there's all kinds of reasons why my brain came up with the, this bullshit story. And let's just quit pretending there's a there's another story here. There's the universe is just suns exploding. Consciousness is a phenomenon of replicating molecules. It's not a phenomenon that you could acquire any other way. Um, you're only going to acquire it by building a machine that needs, you know, that we feel because feelings made us behave. Only things that need to behave are going to feel. And we need it to behave because of the agenda of a DNA molecule. A molecule makes you need. You need because the molecule has to need if it's going to survive the competition. It has to need to survive. It has to make the body need. And it does that by making the mind need. Um, and that's all there is. And yeah, it'd be nice if it was a bigger, bigger story, but there isn't it. This is the story. It's a quick playing games, quit pretending your near death experience is something, or your near life experience, or your near anything experience. Your bullshit. You just quit pretending bullshit is a interesting subject. It's not an interesting subject. It's a fail subject. It's a it's a a horrible failure of reason to waste time. It's worse than sports. I mean, that's another irony, right? Great text can sort of get the idea that sports is crap, uh, but he can't get the idea that a conversation about, you know, uh, how your, what kind of bullshit your brain farts when you're dying, 
<laughs> when your body's breaking down, uh, when it's oxygen deprived, that somehow he can't figure out that uh, that conversation is just as useless as a conversation about, uh, you know, what, what the, the uh, sports team has accomplished lately or what they did yesterday or what the great thing was that happened. You can't see that that's just as childish and immature and nonsensical and foolish and wishful thinking-ish and trivial a conversation as, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, lame-ass sports crap. Um, it's just very disappointing, um, you know, when, you know, people, that is just so bright. Not that I don't like it, but it's just a little bit too much for this stage of the painting, I think. I think it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is this stage. Maybe it's time for a little bit of bold color. Um, yeah, so is there anything else? <laughs> is there anything else? Yeah, that was it for their subjects. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk it to death. I mean, I just, I just found that very, a very disappointing ending. Great text was getting a little drunk. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, just this idea that, oh, that we need to have more conversations about this crap. Well, you know, yeah, there's, there's so much room for incredibly meaningful conversations we could be having about all this bullshit about, you know, what's really ha going on in the universe. What's really happening? Yeah, we're not mammals. It's, it's spent four billion years um, crawling the earth in some rudimentary form, uh, you know, uh, swimming the earth, probably more likely. Swimming the earth. Uh, you know, eking out a, a brutish, harsh existence in horrible, awful conditions. Uh, no, we're really doing something special. We're all going to show up at the at the big uh, the big fundraiser, the big universal fundraiser for uh, what? Um, you know, double coffee cake or something. I mean, what, what do they, what do they really, what do they think is going to be the big singularity prize? Um, you know, it's just so stupid. A conversation so, so immature, so, so, so dishonest. I guess is all I can keep saying. It's just so dishonest. I just, I gotta get more darks in here somehow. I just don't. I don't know. Well, it's probably half of this. This light is just really not good enough. But sometimes, I, you know, that's another thing. You know, it's <coughs> you know these <coughs> the inadvertent parts of uh, you know sometimes is what you you know that sort of defines sometimes character is the weird parts. You know, sometimes a the best part of something is the part that surprises you, you know, that pops out and says something. And, um, uh, yeah, that says fucking mess, that's what that says. Um, but, um, you know, it's certainly a, so, you know, you have to, it's, it's like evolution, you know, you sometimes got to invite the, the horrid disaster, you know, for the, the, a good thing to happen, um, and that's sort of the way evolution works. It'll, it'll make a ton of mistakes, a ton of grotesque, hideous monstrosities, you know, to get its one idiot servant that becomes, you know, idiot servant ape that uh, will become, uh, you know, the human race eventually. I mean, our, you know, our ancestor was a deformity monstrosity, uh, but it had this ability to, you know, probably lost the ability to do a lot of things, <laughs> probably couldn't run very fast, um, the first one, 
but it, uh, it, its brain functioned differently, and it lived in a world of, of internal function, of a busyness inside their head, uh, you know, recognizing the difference between ug and oog, <laughs> and saying, yeah, okay, let's call water ug, and we'll call the sky oog. And uh, leave us start naming the world around us. Uh, let's start to try to understand where we are and what we're doing. What's the game we're playing? And now we're here. We've gotten the faculties. We have the ability to do it. And these people want to waste time having a conversation about, uh, you know, silly crap. You know, delusional, mushy bullshit uh, of their little magical experiences, and uh, just so, so horribly, awfully disgusting.